Recording in progress. Good afternoon and welcome to the April 5th, 2023 special meeting of the Eugene City Council. Thank you all for joining us in this virtual meeting format. For meetings like this one where there is no opportunity for public comment, those wishing to access the meeting can do so by watching the live stream available on our website, the broadcast on Comcast Channel 21, or by calling into one of the phone numbers listed for this meeting on the public webcast and meeting materials web page. And again, thank you again for joining us for this um, special meeting of the council. And with that, I call it to order and I will turn it over to the city manager to introduce the topic. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, City Council. Good to see you back. Uh, I'll give a very brief intro and then I'm gonna turn it over actually to Catherine um, and Katie. So uh, just for the public that are watching this, on February 6th, the City Council passed Ordinance 2.681, which is an ordinance prohibiting fossil fuel infrastructure and in new low rise residential buildings. On February 9th, a referendum petition for the ordinance was submitted to the recorder, to the city recorder. This special meeting is being held actually as directed by Eugene Code 2.980, in which uh, it directs that I, the council must be presented possible options for action no later than 20 days after the recorder certifies an initiative or referendum petition. So that, that 20 days landed during your normal break and that's why we're here today and with that i'm going to turn it over to Catherine. i real quickly um i'm just going to remind all of you since you rarely meet to discuss referred ordinance i'll just take a minute to remind you of oregon elections law so because ordinance 2068 voters it is an election measure which means oregon elections law greatly limits what city staff can stay regarding the ordinance so while all staff can answer specific factual questions you have regarding the ordinance, we can't opine about potential outcomes or other subjective matters related to the ordinance. You as elected officials, your discussions are not similarly limited by Oregon elections law. You're free to give your opinions about the ordinance, the election, whatever you want. But because this is an elections measure, city staff can't participate in those discussions. And we take compliance with elections law extremely serious. I know all of you do as well. So if I have any concerns that a question posed to staff starts wading into a little gray area, I'll just jump on in um, and course correct the conversation. And so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Katie LaSalle. Thanks, Catherine. Um, I'm actually going to continue on with the timeline that the city manager started, because I think it will help um, ground your discussions um, in some of the information that I can provide. And then, um, I also think it may actually answer some of the questions you may already have. So um, on March 9th, uh, the chief petitioners uh, did submit over 1,500 um, signature sheets for a validation. Uh, the city recorder's office was able to conduct those initial uh, verification checks um, on all sheets. And then we were able to turn the petition over to Lane County Elections that same day. On March 15th, um, Lane County Elections provided the results of the uh, signature validations. And the signature validation process is actually established in our city code as well as the uh, referendum, the state's referendum manual. So when we have in a situation like the one that we had, where the required number of signatures um, exceeded uh, 4,500, um, the uh, well, the county it will actually use a, a statistical sampling model that is um, outlined in uh, Oregon administrative rules. So um, that was provided on the 15th. And then uh, after my review, I was able to certify the petition on the 16th. So as of right now, um, the petition is qualified to the ballot. And if council chooses to take no action, um, as your city recorder and the local elections official, I would be submitting the referred measure for the November 7th, 2023 election. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that because I've gotten some questions as to why it will be on the November um, as well, instead of the May. Um, and that is because the steps, the process steps I just outlined right now were not completed in time to meet the um, deadlines for the May 
ballot. Um, although council does have the ability to uh, refer a, a petition to special election or call a special election for a, a um, initiative or a referendum petition. Um, hold on, sorry, got to rethink my brain. Um, there are some guardrails on that. So uh, we there's a requirement in code that the election cannot be held um, sooner than 66 days after I certify. And the day that I certified was actually the 61st day before the May election. Um, uh, putting the code aside, um, even we st we're still obligated to follow state statutes and their county requires that we submit our uh, measure materials by a certain date to be able to be placed on a specific ballot. Um, and that uh, deadline has passed as well. So um, as I stated just a few minutes ago, uh, we are, um, if council does not have to take any action in order to be on, for, for this petition to be on the November uh, ballot. However, um, when a uh, initiative or referendum petition does uh, is certified, council does have some options that are outlined in code. Um, and so that's really what this conversation is for in order to make sure that you understand what options for actions you have if you should choose to take any. Um, and I will, um, I'll just read those real quickly for you um, and then uh, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. So the options are outlined in your AIS. Um, and they are, you can uh, choose to repeal the ordinance referred by referendum petition. Um, you could vote to urge adoption or defeat of the referred measure. And this is really a, a statement from the governing body to the electorate. Um, you could also order a submission of an alternative measure or measures to be voted upon at the same election as the referred measure. Um, and if council has questions about that, um, that may actually need to be a separate work session. All right, I think that's all I had that I wanted to go over. Happy to take any questions. Okay, I thank you. Um, thank you very much, Ellen. I see you in the queue. I just, I wanna just um, ask for one point of clarification before I open up the queue to the rest of council and I, did ask this question of the city attorney. And so I just want to ask it again so that she can share it with the council and with the public that's listening that um, if council takes no action today and so this proceeds to the ballot um, and it is, it, if it wins at the, in the uh, at November election, the question that I want clarified is council's authority and what the process would be in terms of whether they could adjust the effective date, given the gap between June 30th and the election day. So if if on November 7th, the um, voters approve ordinance 20681, then it would be go then it would go into effect right now it is stayed. And what you're referring to is the applicability date um, that is specifically stated in the ordinance of June 30th. And if council did nothing and it was approved on June 7th, then that applicability date would apply. And so the, it would be retroactive. It would, that applicability date would go back to, to June 30th. Your question of what can council do is you can amend it. Um, you could amend, so if it passes, if the voters approve it, then it just becomes part of your code. Um, they're essentially a ninth counselor um, in, in approving this and the voters. And so it would become part of your code and you can amend it as you would any other um, code amendment. So you would have an ordinance, you'd have a public hearing and you could, so specifically to your question about changing the date, yes, absolutely you can change the date and you would, you would amend it just like you would any other ordinance. Okay, thank you very much. And with that, I, Alan, you had your hand raised. Do you still want to speak? Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure I quite understood that. So if it, if it, if it passed, it becomes an ordinance. It is. So 
they're being at the the question posed to the voters is shall the city oh go ahead sorry it, the question being posed is shall the city prohibit fossil fuel infrastructures in no in new low-rise residential buildings starting june 30th 2023 or June 30th, 2023. So they are being, the question being posed to them, it is though they're voting on the ordinance themselves. Mm. So they're not being asked to approve or disapprove your vote or doing, they are voting. The, the question posed to them is, should this become law? And so if they, if the vote is yes, it should become law, It then what it goes into the code just like you had passed it yourselves if they say no then it goes away and doesn't become law. right and 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 as it sits right now the effective day is june after june 30th right and so it would be it would be retroactive so for that whole period through november you'd be in limbo land and but we can't change the original date we have to change it only after the election? That's, That's the correct. What is referred to the voters is the ordinance that you all right. adopted. And it, it it's a there's there's a little bit of confusion between the effective date and the discussion about the ordinance being stayed and the applicability date. And so the it isn't it isn't the ordinance by our code because it has been referred to the voters, the ordinance itself is state it's not in effect until it the in less than until it is um approved by the voters there but the ordinance that you adopted has specific applicability date in it and that's in section two and it says this section applies to building permit applications including those necessary to install new manufacturers submitted on or after june 30th 2023 so because that specific date is in there if it becomes effective on November 8th, that that applicability date springs into life and it becomes retroactive. And there the the you have another provision that specifically says that if it's the city shall deny an application for a permit or suspend or revoke an issued permit. So it is retroactive to June 30th, unless you change the June 30th date. And and that to answer your other question cannot be done to affect what the voters are voting on short of, I mean, you, and as, as Katie said, one of your options is to, you could repeal the ordinance, correct the date, you know, I mean, so it's, but what is right now, what will go to the voters on November 7th has a June, has the June 30th, 2023 date in it. If we were to repeal the ordinance and affect the, change the date to November 8th or whatever it is, um, how does does that affect the uh, the petitioners ability to put it onto the ballot? Yes, if you repeal it, it is the ordinance that was referred is now will not be on the ballot. So you would have your options would be if to change if you wanted to repeal it in order to change the date, you can actually amend your adopted ordinance through um well i'm sorry you wouldn't be amending you have repealed it so you would be adopting a new ordinance with a different date and then that would have to go through the referral process again or you could instead of adopting the ordinance you could change the date and refer it to the voters and it would be on the november ballot so um you it you're, it's not only that you would have to go through the entire process again, you would have the, that is your option. It's always been your option. So you could repeal the ordinance, have an ordinance that you, that changes the June 30th date to whatever date that is the will of the council. And then you as a council refer that to the voters. That's another option available to you. And if we repealed it any time between today and November 3rd, would that also pull it off the ballot? You are limited. There is a specific requirement that says you cannot repeal it during the 61 day period prior to the election of which it's referred. So two months prior to just to November 7th, you cannot repeal it. It's not an option to you. It's going to the, the voters regardless. Okay, I think I understand that. 
my second question was about the work session around support or not support. Um, that can occur after it gets put onto the bat. If we take no action and then come back later and have a a a, 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 a vote as to whether or not we should, council should recommend supporting it or not supporting it, that could occur. Yes. What the the the, 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 the code. Yes, that is correct. Um, the it's the, the the prohibition on the 61 day period provides during the 61 day period prior to an election on a referendum measure, the council shall refrain from adopting an ordinance proposed by the initiative or repealing an ordinance. The other options available to you, which is, you know, urging adoption or defeat that can happen today or after any time after. Okay. Okay, thank you for that line of questioning. Any any other questions or comments from council? Uh, Emily. Just that if we didn't go the route of uh, repealing it and, and readopting it, there's nothing to stop us as counselors from saying our intent is to change the date uh, when it's possible, rather than going through all of this. So uh, I think that we have a voice um, individually outside of council and we could use that. Yeah, Mike. Thank you, Mayor. And for those watching again, please forgive the fact that you can't see me and that I have the picture up. I have a problem with the camera on my computer. And so it makes for a distracting visual when I have it on. <clears throat> um, I think that the notion of us talking about what we may or may not do after November 7th may or may not have really any any effect on how people behave. The reason I brought this up in February and asked, you know, in the work session that we had initially to send it to the May ballot was because we had time and I was concerned about the consequences of the message we were sending. Now the time frame has locked us in, and it, I believe we we now and regardless of what we do, we will see the consequences. And I'm very sorry that that's the case. I've talked with city attorney and talked with uh, very briefly uh, initially with city manager about you know what are some of the potential remedies because I believe. We've now sent a message to anyone thinking of building a home this summer that they're putting their money at immense risk because we don't know the outcomes and that we will see a dramatic drop in the number in the middle of a housing crisis in the number of homes that will be built in Eugene this summer. And I'm very sorry that that's going to be the case, but I don't believe based on what I've heard there's anything we can do other than tell the public, you know, trust me, we'll fix it later. And, and I believe our trust may be at an all time low. And if it were my quarter million or half a million or whatever the number at risk, I wouldn't be willing to put that at risk under these circumstances. So I think we'll see a, a massive short in the number of homes that will be built this summer as a result. And I think that's a terrible outcome. I wish we had sent it to the ballot in the first place. Thank you. Okay. Oops, wrong button. That's okay. Uh, Alan, Alan, another comment? Another question. Uh, so I was trying, trying to get rid of the uncertainty part of it or add a limbo. Um, and it sounds like the only way to do that is repeal the ordinance and, and then redo it. But that sends the whole process starting again. Um, and so uh, is there any other alternative to repeal that would um, allow us to get rid of that uncertainty other than us saying, well, we'll just make, we won't make it retroactive, we'll change it later. Um, we, I guess we could vote to modify the ordinance, but that wouldn't be part of what's being voted on, right? Correct. You could, um, so if you, if your concern is starting the entire process again, you could, instead of 
you could repeal the current ordinance, which would then get rid of the current referral of that ordinance with that June date. You could then, instead of going through the process of adopting another ordinance with a different date, you all could elect just to ref yourselves refer an ordinance with a different date in it. So then, and it would be on the November um, ballot. So it would, it wouldn't, it wouldn't start the process over again that you would need to adopt an ordinance, have a public hearing. Um, uh, go through the signature process to get it onto the ballot. If that's what your question is, you could yourselves. Oh, we could refer it. We could you refer could... it. And that would take the old one off and put the new one that we referred yes. on. Yes. Um, and, we, and, but we have to do that today. No. You could do that anytime between us and September 3rd. Yes. Right. Up until the 61st. So that in essence would be the same as amending the ordinance. Uh, well, would we we would uh, technically would we be amending the ordinance and referring that, or would we be repealing it, putting a new one forward, and and referring that? You new would one. be repealing it and referring a whole new ordinance because and with a different and if the the only change I would expect would be the date, but um, if you yes you would be because the only action now you can't amend the ordinance that's been referred you would need to repeal that and then ref if you wanted to refer it another word right or and and we could amend the ordinance and not refer that new one but that what they'd be voting on would be the one that was that had the Jan june date which right. would you, be you very can't, confusing. you can't you can't amend the the ordinance that you adopted because it is has been referred it stayed and you you oh, can't, can't make changes to it we can either re, uh, repeal it or not mm -hmm. we can't just all right i got it uh yeah uh, katie what a mess i just wanted to clarify that um we do have that if council's referring a measure um it needs to be 90 days uh before that's in our code whereas um with the uh petitioners uh putting it forward it it allowed for a shorter time frame because council could call a special election for that so i just wanted to make that clear we we submit um by that 61st day before the election the measure information to the county um but council would have to do that um 90 days prior so that's august 7th Right. And so that that it's it, they actually work together. The 61st day limitation that I read was just about repealing. You can't repeal it. And what she's speaking to is if the intent is to repeal and then refer, that's when the 90 days comes in. Thank you, Katie, for that. And Mike, another question or comment? Yeah, I just want to clarify what was just said, just so I understand it properly. So, Catherine unless I'm mistaken here, this council could up until the beginning of August repeal and refer, but then before September 3rd could repeal that referral again. Right? What? So in other words, yes. this council well, could repeal it and replace. The only and then reason as long as we hit, as long as we don't hit September 3rd, they could you know, the council majority could repeal it again, the 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 one we decided to replace it with, correct? Well, the it is that's a that's a different question than what's being posed to you today. And I can look specifically at that, but but the only reason the question of repealing it is in front of you today is because it was referred I know through petition. But, but if we referred, I'm just saying that it, the the 60 day window applies to a referral from the voters or from the council, correct? Um, the 61st day is only a part of the initiative and referendum process. I Thank so you. I'm not aware so of a limitation. If you wanted to refer, if you referred up until, and Katie could probably speak to this, like there is a time where we can't pull something back from the state or the county. What so, is that timeline? 
that is that 61st day of submission. Okay. Um, so, so, so it is then. Okay. I apologize. It is the so up till September 3rd, this council could make an additional decision to take it back off the ballot entirely. Am I correct? Yes, they could, you could vote to repeal your resolution, referring it to the voters. Yeah. And then they, and then we'd be back at ground zero with no ordinance of any kind in place and free to put whatever ordinance we wanted in place after that. Correct. Y yes. Or okay. refer a different ordinance. Yes. Yeah. I, I'd, I'd say that would be trust. That would be stretching our, our trust with the community pretty far. I wouldn't recommend us doing it, but it is possible. And I just wanted to verify. Yeah, thank you for that. I, it feels to me like the, the the issue of clarity is really just the June 30th date is the thing that is of concern to us. Um, so I just appreciate uh, council's line of questioning. Are, are any other councils needing a moment to speak to this or get further clarification? Okay, if that's- yeah, So what is it that we have to do today? So so you you have to either you you can choose to do nothing today or you can choose one of those other possible motions and and so, and if you and what i'm understanding again you can choose to do nothing today if from what i'm gathering the city attorney is saying if you decided that you wanted to per, put forward your own ordinance that has an adjusted date you have until early august to do that you wouldn't have to make that decision today you would just do nothing today so that it stands and it's going to the ballot or you can choose one of the other motions yeah so does that mean if we don't is there anything that would that we would lose the ability to do if we did nothing today no i think the answer is no per correct there's nothing that you, you don't if you do nothing today nothing comes off the table if, if that's your question any of our options comes up. Correct. Okay. okay so with that no pressure at all council president i am going to turn to you to put a motion or not on the table thank you mayor <clears throat> i appreciate the opportunity to to do this and i am not going to put a motion on the table uh, and i'd like to speak to that briefly i believe that we are already uh, have created a level of confusion out in the community and I do not think it's in anybody's interest that we um, continue with that. I'm reminded of the old adage when you find yourself in a hole stop digging and right now I think we let the public raise their voice and make that determination. We had a chance to do that earlier and a majority of this body said no. So now that the public has taken it into their own hands I say we just step back and let the process play out. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Emily. Thank you. Um, I'm just wondering if we haven't lost anything that we can do after today, why, why did we meet today? You're required by your code, your code mandates that the city manager present to you within 20 days after the city recorder certified it. So it wasn't, this wasn't a subjective or a decision. It was a, it is a code requirement that um, these three options that are in 2.980 be presented to okay. you today because it's within that 20 days. Okay, thank you. So we could think about it. Mayor, you're on mute. Yeah, thank you. If there are any, unless there are any other comments or questions, that is the sole order of business for the day. And I will call us adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you.